Welcome back to Theology in Action. My name is Tony Caffey, and I'm here with my co-host, Levi. Levi, good to see you this morning. How are you? Doing good. We're going to talk about an important subject today, yeah. something yeah. that uh, I know you're passionate about. Absolutely. And something that I've thought a lot about as well. So uh, the issue is legalism. But I, th I think let's before we get into legalism, let's talk more generally about spiritual discipline. Okay. So what does it mean to be a spiritually disciplined follower of Jesus? Yeah, I think the first thing that I would think of is having a consistent walk. Uh, I would, some of the practices that I think come up first is spending time with him every day. Whether uh, I, I know something that I've personally tried myself to do more consistently because I'm not a morning person is get up early enough and make sure I give that first that first fruits of the day, that first part of the day, give that to the Lord, get in the Word, uh, study, pray, uh, making sure I'm putting any time toward that every day, praying, studying His Word, even just a benefit of reading Scripture that I'm finding now in the morning is I can meditate on it all day, and it helps me to memorize it, which has been a struggle of mine for many years. So the the spiritual a spiritually disciplined follower, I, I think that's kind of one of the first things that comes up is consistent, is is the big word that, that strikes in my mind, is having a consistent walk with with Christ, and the relationship, I guess, would be a good word for that. Uh, any thoughts or elaboration there? I agree. Nothing has been more beneficial to my own life than consistent time in God's Word that's been the the most significant part of my growth as a disciple of Jesus. And it's also been enjoyable I, to spend time with the Lord, to think, you know, I this creator of the universe actually wants to communicate with me yeah. through his word, and, and I can communicate back in prayer. So that's incredibly valuable f to me. So let me play devil's advocate for sure. you. Sure, You talked about daily, you know, habits, you're just a legalist. That's what you are, Levi. You're just legalistic in your approach to discipline. That's why you feel like you have to do it every day. And then if you don't do it, you feel like God's angry with you. Yeah. True, untrue? Ooh, true or untrue. My brain loves to play hypotheticals there. I would, I would, say, I, I would say untrue in, in most of any cases. And from my personal background outside of faith, even in uh, being a personal trainer and being in sports and fitness, in really any area of life, there has to be some consistency for some growth. Uh, it, I'm not personally married myself, but you have a wife. If you didn't spend time engaging with your wife yeah. every day, there would, there'd be some level of problems. There'd be some communication issues. Things would arise from that. And I, I think that would be my my first surface level pushback to that is, is it's not it's not a legalistic approach that I'm, I'm approaching as I am looking at it as a re relationship and to have growth in that relationship, I have to spend time with that person. And, and God gave us his word. He gave us the Bible as a means to spend time with him. He gave us prayer. He gave us worship on the corporate and the personal level to spend time with him. So those are, those are the facets that he gave us and has asked us and directed us to say, if you want this growth, if you want the process of sanctification to carry out, if you want me to be able to work in you in this way, this is how you do it. Uh, I, I think that people can absolutely cross into legalism, and I, that's, that's a very important topic because it can become kind of a, a poison or venom in the church or in a personal, personal life, but... I think on the surface level to say you're having to having a disciplined walk with Jesus is a foundational important matter. Yeah, the some of the legalistic ways in which people approach spiritual spiritual discipline, I would even say it's more than a legalism, it's like a superstitious kind yeah. of thing, yeah. you know. I'm having a rough day today. I didn't read my Bible. So, yeah. if I would have read my Bible, my day would have gone well today. Well, that's just garden variety. Sure superstition. Yeah. You know, uh, it's kind of funny. Think about Paul not reading his Bible in the morning, and yet he's in prison, and he was telling um, Timothy in 2 Timothy, you know, bring me the scrolls, bring me the scriptures so I can read in prison in this dark, dank cell. You know, he's not saying that so that he can have a good day there. He's saying, there so, he's saying that so he can 
spend time with the Lord so that he can study the Word, so that he can encounter the God of the universe while he's suffering. Mm -hmm. So I think the legalism side of it is alleviated when we think about the nature of our relationship with the Lord. Our disciplines are an outworking of our relationship, not uh, not a way to access our relationship with yeah. the Lord. So it's not work based. It's not works based, right? Exactly. So similar to our salvation, our salvation yeah. is by faith alone. Um, similarly, our relationship with the Lord and and our identity in Christ is what fuels those disciplines, not the other way around. Yeah. We're not appeasing an angry God every day by reading our Bible. We're actually interacting with a gracious God who loves us, um, and and that that might take. A, a, a shift of thinking for some people, because we do have folks, even in the Christian world, who who wake up every day thinking God's angry at them and they've got to appease Him. Sure. Versus, you know, having that that anchored identity that I'm a child of God, I love God, and I want to spend time with God. I want to pray. I want to I want to go to church as an an outworking, an outgrowth of my my faith and my relationship with Him. Yeah. Yeah. Good book on this subject would be Disciplines of a Godly Man by R. Kent Hughes. He actually Arkent, spends okay. that first chapter explaining the difference between legalism and discipline. And discipline, too, just you think etymologically, it's linked to this uh, word disciple, right? Mm -hmm. So we're being disciplined as a disciple of Jesus. Uh, so already built into the term is you're, you're a follower already. Yeah. You're a disciple who is disciplined as a follower. So that, that helps too. So you're not disciplined in order to earn favor with God. You're disciplined as an outworking of your favored status yeah. as a child of God. Yeah, I like that. So you actually kind of touched on it. And uh, how, um, let me rephrase the question in my mind here. You, you brought up a resource. What would be some good resources? Uh, do you have any other resources that a follower can use to help in this area? Yeah, so there's lots of disciplines. So we're speaking generically, I think, about disciplines, but uh, obviously time in God's Word is something that's modeled for us. Even David talks about meditating on God's Word day and night. Psalm 119 is a great passage that, you know, elaborates on the, the potency of God's Word. Um, prayer, obviously, we see that... Uh, exemplified in the Old Testament. Jesus exemplified us. Jesus went off to a hillside and prayed all night long to the Lord. Jesus craved time alone with his Father and taught his disciples to pray likewise. Uh, so I, I think those are, you know, the two kind of core disciplines for the Christian life and for 2,000 years of church history. Those are typically the disciplines that that Christians um uh, You'll focus on first, but you could add to that maybe it's not working of scripture, memorization yeah. uh, of scripture, the meditating, the chewing, the musing on God's word instead of just you know reading it. Um, fasting is something that we see modeled in the Old Testament and the New Testament, kind of a tricky discipline uh, for some people and and a hard one yeah. actually, but one that can help focus our senses on the Lord and and as we kind of suffer. Physically, we start to cry out to the Lord spiritually. I've had benefit with fasting. Um, so a good book on that subject is, I think it's Whitney, is the author of a book called Spiritual Disciplines. Really simple. And he just walks through those disciplines as well as a, a few others. Uh, I think the discipline of generosity. I think the discipline of simplicity is in there as well to kind of streamline the consumeristic tendencies that we have. This one's a little more controversial, but Richard Foster has a book called uh, The uh, Spirit of Disciplines, I think it is, and um, you know, there's some in there about kind of meditation, and there's, uh, there's a danger in, in the meditation practice because you, you got to really clarify what you mean by that. What does meditating on Scripture yeah. mean? Or meditation more generally. In the Eastern mindset, it means emptying your mind. Right. So that would be Eastern religions, that would be uh, kind of, you know, the idea of being in the lotus position. Kundalini and, type stuff, things like the... I don't know that word, but... The, it's tied to yoga and a lot of the New Age meditation aspects. Okay, of, empty, of yes. empty, yes. empty. Whereas the biblical 
understanding of meditation is really chewing on Scripture. Yeah. You know, you're filling your mind, you're emptying your mind of the distractions in order to have more concentrated focus on God and His Word. Yeah. So, and, and there's a world of difference between that. So uh, other than that, I think I actually do think Richard Foster's book is helpful and, and would be a good read for most Christians. Disciplines of a Godly Man is another good source. But I, I mean, I think it would be helpful just to go through Scripture and think about the way in which discipline is a part of the daily lives of, of most of, of the Christians throughout time. There's a passage uh, in Deuteronomy that talks about the kings of Israel needing to uh, uh, yearly read through the Scriptures and even recite them to the congregation. So this was built into the kingship of the Israelites. You know, Moses read Scripture to the... Israelites, we have um, you know this exhortation from Paul to Timothy to to read and um, to teach and preach the scriptures. And I already mentioned Second Timothy, Paul's begging Timothy to bring the scriptures to him so that he can spend time in them. We have exhortations from Jesus in the New Testament as well as the epistles to be men and women of prayer, both individually and then corporately. Yeah. Jesus prayed alone, Jesus prayed with his disciples. So, I mean, that would be a fruitful study, just to go through the Bible and see the ways in which disciplines are demonstrated by, um, you know, Old Testament believers and New Testament believers. I think there's an interesting—it keeps rolling around in my head. We've, you've touched on the Word and Scripture and meditating and memorizing Scripture, and my thought process here is the— the reason behind the meditating in allowing it to change you and applying it to your life, not necessarily the being able to read it, recite a scripture at a situation or at a person. And there's a some discipline and legalistic maybe crossing that can happen there. And in I don't know that I necessarily have a question, but that just keeps coming up in my mind because I know a lot of people do. Uh, they would call it a discipline. One of the pastors that I've uh, was under, uh, they didn't have a lot of the right beliefs, but I've never met anyone who knew Scripture better. He could stand on stage for three hours and recite Scripture at you. They may not connect to each other, and you may not understand why he's saying the Scriptures, but he knew the Bible. He knew every word of it. He had memorized it, whether or not he meditated and applied it. I, I can't necessarily be the judge there, but he knew the Scripture. I just wonder, was there some legalism behind what he was doing and why? There might be, or or even, I mean, it can be a prideful thing as well. I went through a period, I'll just call it immature Tony, an immature Tony stage, where uh, my Bible reading was really, uh, not not totally, but partially focused on having all the answers and being able to, to say the right things at the right moments to people, you know, to be the know-it-all in the room. And um, and I also was intimidated by people like who you said, who uh, knew Scripture, and, and I kind of had this thing inside of me like, nobody's going to out-Scripture me. You know, I'm going <laughs> to read this and until I know it, until I can recite it. And it really took the joy out of it yeah. to have that mindset. It became very anthropocentric instead of theocentric, whereas... You know, now my time in God's Word is not about, like, i got to gather some facts so I can, you know, at the next cocktail party, be able to impress somebody. It's, I really do want to just spend time with the Lord. I want to focus on Him, and and it's not about, you know, what I can show off or what I can say in front of another person. And it's not, and I preach every week, so I have to get in front of the church and and says the, say, thus says the Lord. I try to keep my spiritual disciplines separate from the preparation for that. So otherwise I have this kind of weird mixture of my uh, personal devotional time with also my work life. Yeah, <laughs> so I, so I know some pastors do that and advocate for that, but for me it's healthier to separate that. Here's my time with God in terms of uh, you know studying His Word and spending time with Him, and then after I'm done with that, then I focus on work, which is preparing a message, which which is still very much you know, time with God, yeah. contemplative, studying His Word, etc. But but it it's it's separate from my my own personal times of devotion. That's been healthy for me. Yeah. So I think it applies to every Christian wherever they're at. Say I'm wanting to grow 
in my walk with with Christ, with Jesus, uh, grow in spiritual discipli- disciplines. What would be some keys, some points? How? What are some next steps or beginning steps? Let's start at the beginning. Well, you need to get saved sure. if you're not saved. So put your faith in Christ. Romans ten nine and ten. If we confess with our mouth that He is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, we shall be saved. So the the discipline comes from being a disciple from being a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, as your identity is settled in that, I would encourage, think of it like a stool, like a three-legged stool. Three things are going to uh, be the foundation of your your discipleship and your growth. One would be uh, daily time in God's Word, reading, studying, meditating, memorizing in some cases. If, if uh, you have time for that as well. So, and then on top of that, having a prayer life. So we're allowing God to speak to us through the power of His Word, and then we're communicating back to God in prayer. And Jesus gave us a great model for prayer, in terms of you know confession and and uh, intercession and uh, even the supplications that we may give us our, this day our daily bread and, and those kinds of things. So the Lord's Prayer is a good model for that. There's other places you can go, John 15, to, to see the way in which prayer is modeled. But, I mean, we don't have to get carried away with it. Just spend time communicating with God on a daily basis. Let, let God's Word even inform the way that you're praying. And then the, the third leg of that stool would be, and I've said this before, you know, get to church. You know, <laughs> go to... That, that, what better discipline than that to have that rhythm that goes all the way back to the Old Testament of once a week, we're going to spend time worshiping the Lord in the fellowship of the saints. So that discipline was taught to me as a kid by my parents, and even if you didn't have that upbringing, you can still experience the benefit of that at whatever stage of life you're in by the rhythm of going to church, going setting all the burdens aside, stop working on Sunday morning or stop whatever uh, activities you're involved in, turn off the distractions, forget about football until Sunday afternoon anyway, and go to church and spend time worshiping the Lord, fellowshipping with the saints. So, I mean, you can build on that. You can have a a four-legged stool if you want or a five-legged stool and incorporate maybe some other components to that, fasting, or we talked about memorization, you know, um, generosity, simplicity. There's other kind of um, specific disciplines you can add to that category, but that that three three legged stool is a good place to start and move on from. Yeah, that's that's great information. Something to <clears throat> excuse me build off of there. So this where I saw lacking and where I found benefit in, and you talked about going to church, but finding uh, a mentor, finding so that they could kind of point out this is the area you're lacking. If in a worldly sense, if I'm uh, going to the gym, I see someone has results that I want, I'm going to ask them, what are you doing? How do I get that? It's that same concept kind of applies in the Christian walk. You come to church, you see examples I, I mentor under one of our elders, and he has helped me extremely in my walk, and he can see my blind spots. He knows I'm vulnerable enough with him that he knows where I'm at and what I need to grow in, and he's helping me sharpen the disciplines I already have and add new ones that I hadn't even thought about. Good, Levi. Yeah, everybody should be discipling and then being discipled as well. So having that kind of Matthew 28 mindset in your life is good. And, you know, I'm a senior pastor. I'm a 44-year-old disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm growing uh, in my walk with the Lord and benefiting from my fellow elders and others within the church like like everybody else in the church is. So, well, good talk. Thanks for that. Good uh, discussion about discipline and legalism. If you want to see more Theology in Action, you can check out our YouTube page or go to vbvf.org. You can also access weekly sermons, as well as live stream on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. That's vbvf.org.